Good morning. Welcome to the Since Time Immemorial for Educator Preparation Programs webinar. We're glad that you've joined us today. My name is Leonie Sherwin. I'm a program manager with HESB. With me today, I also have Dr. Laura Lynn of OSPI's Office of Native Education and Megan Moore from HESB. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here with you all. Uh, my name is uh, Laura Lynn. I am the uh, program supervisor with the Office of Native Education in um, OSPI. I am the daughter of uh, Grace Elizabeth Cusick and Kenneth Lee Rohr. I'm a descendant of the uh, Chickasaw uh, people, and also I have um, ancestry of, of European, Eastern European, and with my father's people, a relative of those people from the Mideast, from Syria. So those of us who are here at OSPI, we are sharing the traditional lands of the Squaxin Island people. As I said, we're glad you joined us today. The purpose of today's webinar is to learn how educator preparation programs across the state are integrating this Sense Time Immemorial curriculum into their programs, how they are assessing their candidates to ensure their candidates are prepared to teach the STI curriculum, and how they're providing professional development for faculty and staff. Uh, we also would like to encourage collaboration between educator preparation programs. We have several programs who will pre be presenting today, and we hope that if you find something interesting to you or that you have mo more questions about, you'll reach out to that program and collaborate with them. So before we get started into the program presentations, I'd like to just give you a little bit of background uh, on the Since Time Immemorial. Um, and what we are doing for preparation programs. As many of you know, in 2018, Washington State Legislature acted to require teacher preparation programs to ensure that all educator candidates engage in learning experiences involving OSPI's Since Time Immemorial curriculum. PESB responded and approved two new WAC rules, which you can see here, and I would encourage you to look into those rules and read those. Um, also, PESB began collaborating with the Office of Native Education to ensure that the guidance and requirements that were being offered to educator preparation programs were well fit to the guidance and requirements that was being offered to schools and districts. Uh, also, in conjunction with the Office of Native Education, we created an STI steering committee with representatives from WACT and WESEP to develop a support strategy for preparation programs. Uh, so in the fall of 19, the steering committee sent out a survey to preparation programs and based on that survey and the results from that, we created a plan for the next steps. So in winter of 2020, the plan is to host two webinars. We did hold the first webinar on February 19th, which was around tribal consultation and partnerships. Today, the webinar is regarding content assessment and professional development around STI. Also in the winter, uh, the Office of Native Education is creating a tribal consultation web page that uh, both districts and preparation programs can utilize. And they're also collecting uh, data on the progress of school districts in STI implementation. PESB as well is collecting the names of partnering school districts from preparation programs to help with that collaboration. In the spring, the steering committee has planned for the Office of Native Edu well, actually, the Office of Native Education is conducting ongoing basic training and training of trainers around the STI curriculum. And we are also looking at working together to develop STI guidance for preparation programs. This guidance will include content, assessment, best practices around curriculum integration, and tribal partnerships and consultation. The plan then is to have WACTI and WESEP review the guidance language and give their input, and then PESB and one will present this guidance at the PESB board meeting. Uh, at, the goal is to present it at May. Uh, at this point, it may be delayed a little bit, so if not presented at May, it would be presented in July. 
and then we will post the guidance and the STI resources on PESB's website. So that is just the background. As I mentioned, please be sure to revisit the uh, STI Tribal Consultation webinar where you can find more information. And now we will hear from our different educators. Um, we have several educator preparation programs who have created presentations so they can share with us what they are doing in their programs. Today we'll hear from Yakima Valley College, the University of Washington Tacoma, and um, co collaboration between Western Washington University, the University of Washington Seattle, and the University of Washington Bothell. We have three other programs who created slides for this presentation. Unfortunately, we were not able to record them. So uh, on the PowerPoint, you will see links to slides from Central Washington University, Eastern Washington University, and Washington State University. We hope that you will also click on those links to access their presentations as well. We want to thank all of our programs for creating this information for us. Um, these programs were awarded uh, legislative funding back in 2018 to begin this work around since time in, immemorial. Uh, so we have asked them to share with us today. Okay, again, thank you. And at this point, we will hear from Yakima Valley College. Uh, you can see from this first slide that I, I actually teach uh, history here at Yakima Valley College, but I, I'm a bit of a consultant with our Bachelor of Applied Science Teacher Education Program, which is uh, in the process of being just stood up here in its uh, second year and moving toward its third. And I did, as it says, I did go through the training. Uh, full disclosure, I also teach uh, social studies methods uh, for elementary at summer adjunct for WSU, and I believe uh, Dr. Akma will be speaking later. So um, here we go. Uh, you can see the timeline here, and it, you can see that we've moved uh, fairly quickly to try to integrate since time immemorial with some of the things we're doing here at Yakima Valley College. So. Uh, when I first was introduced to the idea that we're going to be working with this curriculum in, in a couple of my different positions, I immediately went with uh, a meeting to the director of Yakima Nation Higher Ed. Now, this is uh, Elise Washines, and she also is one of the developers of Since Time Immemorial, so it was a very uh, fortunate opportunity for me. And uh, listening to the earlier presentation, one of the things that we've been able to do here is we've had those personal contacts within the Yakima Nation established already, so that's, that's enabled us to move pretty quickly uh, just because we, you know, we, we already established um, who we are with them and, and um, have worked with them over the years. And then in the fall uh, 2018, we had the meetings with the Bachelor of Applied Science uh, in teacher education, uh, faculty administration, and then uh, I represented the arts and sciences in that. So I am an ethno historian and I've done work with uh, Native American history and, and contemporary Native culture. So that's kind of why I ended up as part of this. And then in the winter, uh, 2019, we are, uh, CWU has a co-location with us here in Yakima, and so we responded to a request uh, through the liaison to integrate STI into our Pacific Northwest History course, and similar to what I heard earlier as well, uh, for education majors, and then also it's advice for our Bachelor of Applied Science teacher education candidates, when, if they're transfer students. If they're in it already, they, they have another route, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, and so we have a uh, plan with Emily Washines, who happens to be Elisa's sister. So we have revamped our Pacific Northwest History course, and we are teaching that, uh, co-teaching that with Emily um, and me. And that's going very well, and we're offering that every quarter. And then uh, our Bachelor of Applied Science Teacher Education Program, This we just recently hired someone who has uh, experience working on the Yakima Reservation, and she will be doing, if we kind of skip down to the bottom over the Northwest History course for a moment, they plan to integrate it in their social science methods instruction and to do uh, assessment with field observation. And I can't speak much more to that. She's recently hired and they're still uh, putting that in, into uh, the process. I will speak about our Pacific Northwest History course here though. Um, you know, Emily and I co-teach it. So, you know, our native presence is full, right? Obviously, and perspective is full. We do, um, STI is part of what we teach, and uh, we have assignments, and they have to work with all four grade bands. Uh, it is not a methods course. So I don't ask the students to teach it. 
but they are uh, very familiar and they do assignments and that includes uh, writing and searching through the, the website. So they, they are very familiar with it and have been assessed on it uh, when we go, when we uh, work through that course. So when I speak to people about uh, since time immemorial, and of course I would defer to Dr. Lin with any of this, and I think about some best practices. And when I teach uh, masters and teaching candidates or people that are teaching, uh, there's, I call this my S's here, and there's some things that come up that I, I like to communicate. Um, first, that there is a specific application here with uh, Native sovereignty, and that it, in fact there is available curriculum, which you know some people don't know. And it's, I think it's important to, if you're teaching methods um, or supervising candidates, that you actually have them you know, teach the material, and then you assess them doing that. And if you're teaching professors or, or other professors, you make sure that their lessons that they're teaching their uh, prospective candidates also uh, have STI as part of their curriculum and that's assessed as well. So there's a couple layers of assessment there that in my mind would you need to have to be successful, okay? Both for the candidates and also for the people teaching the candidates. And I understand that there's a lot of autonomy and pride and such and, and I'm sure a lot of professors and instructors don't want somebody uh, looking at their curriculum too tightly, but uh, that's if you wanna implement this, that's really I would strongly suggest that. The spirit of the curriculum, uh, it is, you know, there's a bit of a menu there. There's a lot of curriculum and I think people could get easily overwhelmed. And so a big chunk of this is to understand that you're, you're really um, trying to just get into this native perspective and try to honor the spirit of that curriculum, it, you know, because you, you may, people may not be perfect at it the first few times out the gate. And so just honoring the spirit of the curriculum, very important. Uh, sovereignty. So when I talked to Lise Washines, when I first, uh, got wind of that I needed to get, you know, good at this uh, STI uh, implementation. Uh, I said, you know, I've looked at the curriculum. What really are you looking for? And she said, really, what we want people to understand is that we do not trade away our sovereignty, our self-governance, our autonomy, and our, our, our resource bases uh, with our, our treaties and with the accept, accepting of the uh, settlers and people that came here. And so that sovereignty is extremely important to understand. And I want to say, too, that that slide presentation in the early learning um, grade band is a really nice um, introduction to the curriculum overall. So again, that's in the early learning. There's an introductory uh, slide program that in it, it defines sovereignty as essentially, and I'm paraphrasing, self-government and the ability to uh, live a traditional lifestyle as desired. Uh, salmon. So, <clears throat> you know, but again, people can get overwhelmed with this uh, curriculum. And, and of course, it's, uh, I'll talk about social studies here in a minute, but um, you know, I always kind of say, when in doubt, go salmon. There's a lot of salmon curriculum. It's pretty pervasive. It's multidisciplinary, and it's a good way to uh, get into the curriculum without getting overwhelmed if you're looking for something to, to be a bit of a hook. Uh, stewardship, and this was kind of brought to my attention, really, that this stewardship of, of resources is a big part of the curriculum as well that is found throughout, and that's another approach. And then finally, surpassing social studies. Uh, as somebody taught uh, secondary social studies for about a dozen years, I've often felt like social studies is um, not the highest priority uh, for a lot of districts. And um, for that reason, uh, I think if we want to get science since time immemorial, we need to make sure that we're working beyond social studies and encourage other disciplines to uh, utilize the curriculum as well. And I think that's really, really important. And that's why I go back to something like SAM and, you know, easily integrate that into science, art, you know, just as easy examples. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, well, hi everybody. Thank you so much for allowing me the brief opportunity to share more information. Uh, I am representing UWT today and I want to point out that uh, Dr. Julia Aguirre, the director of our teacher certification programs, is also willing to answer any questions if you have any. And I just wanted to start off by acknowledging that here at UW Tacoma, we are uh, situated on the uh, traditional uh, ancestral homeland of the Puyallup tribe of Indians. And so I look forward to sharing with all of you just little snippets about our format process and some some thoughts about uh, other programs if you would um, consider some of our um, just some of our thoughts about uh, promising practices so very quickly our process was putting together a faculty team of three we're very lucky that we have an American Indian studies minor and so we were able to um, pull in and collaborate with two of our faculty Dr. Danica Miller and Dr. Michelle Montgomery who not only teach in the uh, minor studies program but they have deep connections with uh, various tribal nations and indigenous communities in, in the state and also um, across the nation and so basically they were 
our, our lead who helped us uh, work, work through process and also um, suggestions for uh, consultations and things of that sort. Um, so just in terms of this first slide, just briefly walking you through our process is one was in autumn quarter, we really felt that having a primer on uh, the content and framework and the why was very important. So we held a, a three hour workshop which we open to not just our teacher candidates and faculty and staff, but also our field supervisors and mentor teachers. And so we had a great uh, participation rate. And again, it was just a primer to help people understand the, um, the, the why question. And then uh, between autumn and winter and spring quarter, giving people some guidance on what we wanted them to do to really think about looking at their curricula and um, figuring out ways to incorporate uh, STI. In addition to the faculty felt very strongly that part of our mission is around incorporating culturally re uh, responsive uh, teaching as well as um, uh, critical indigenous studies into all of this because we felt that that was really important to ensure that our candidates were teaching the information with um, with the integrity that aligns with our with our mission. And so as you'll see in the table below, we have three tracks. And basically, uh, we did not create a separate course, but we did look at integrating throughout uh, two courses for all the tracks. So in literacy uh, methods and multicultural education. And then as you can see in the bottom part of the table, the different tracks are general ed and our second have different methods courses and so the content was embedded into specific designated assignments readings and assessments in those courses and so uh, the next couple of slides I will briefly uh, run through because I'm giving some models if any of you would like to see the different ways that this has been integrated across uh, at the course level and also across the track level. I know that a lot of times that's helpful to see models. And so the first one is, uh, and I was responding to the different prompts. So. Uh, STI curriculum to reflect local tribal history. So if you look at the person who taught our secondary science methods course, he walks through about that specific assignment and the um, specifically about um, local tribal histories. And his specifically focused on lesson planning. So, you know, trying to scaffold that out for our candidates. So they had some experience to pilot things out and receive feedback throughout the process. So this, um, she gives one example about how we integrated um, STI into our uh, dual track K-8 and uh, teaching English language learners track. So the example one will take you to a specific um, course in multicultural education and showing you how that instructor uh, prepared that uh, specific lesson. And then the second example, when you click on that, will take you to a curriculum map that shows how uh, it was integrated throughout the entire uh, track, throughout the different courses. So again, you're more than welcome to, I received my colleagues' permission that you're more than welcome to share these, to adapt them, to make them your own, because I know a lot of times it's helpful to have those different models. So assessment of learning, and uh, what I will just say is that we're still in the process of figuring out how do we intentionally align our assessments across each track. And one of the challenges has been that in the field, uh, several, several of our candidates have been reporting that many of their um, mentor teachers don't even know what STI is, or they don't think it's uh, anything that, you know, they think it's voluntary. And so our candidates have been struggling with, with that. And so we really are circling back with our partner schools because we want to make sure that our candidates are receiving opportunities to also practice what they're learning in the field and, and, and doing what they need to do. Um, but some of the things that we're doing is trying to include some questions on our completer surveys to see uh, where our candidates are at. Because again, when I spoke to a few um, about, you know, a quarter or so said that they didn't have ample opportunities to do that in their field placements. And the last and final slide is advice or information for other programs. And so I, I think that for us is really looking at this as something that's a it's a lifetime commitment for us at UWT in terms of this is not a, a one and done. We're really trying to figure out ways to incorporate STI not in only to our um, teacher CERT programs, but across our other um, not in CERT programs. And so what we're doing right now is some of you might be aware of that Dr. Robin Minthorn is our new director for our educational leadership um, 
EDD program, and she is putting together an Indigenous Partnership Subcommittee. And so this group will really help us with uh, looking at our assessments, the content, the, um, the curriculum, how can we really incorporate um, diverse intertribal perspectives as well. And so as that is built out, we'll share back out about um, ways that if anyone else would like to collaborate, we would, we would appreciate that opportunity and would welcome it. And also with um, the tribal um, consultation. So again, we're very fortunate that we have Native faculty here at UWT and across the system who have walked us through protocols and uh, do's and don'ts, and we've been very fortunate. But also this notion of cultural humility, and I really appreciate some others who have talked about this work is, um, really does require uh, us to engage in, in a manner that doesn't uh, perpetuate problematic uh, imagery or uh, racialized stereotypes, and so, We've been um, having some great lessons learned as our candidates even uh, try this out in their own practice. And then I think the final thing, which I think is a longer term conversation, is about sustainability. And so we're starting small and scaling out. But I think at some point, just sharing more resources and knowledge will be helpful. And just using our uh, case as an example, it's very difficult to constantly go back and, and um, we want to be mindful of being good neighbors to our uh, community partners because we recognize that it's a lot for them to also um, consult with us, to give us advice, to um, come visit our courses. And so I think that we're trying to be mindful of, of those issues as well. So again, I think my time is about up, but again, uh, feel free to contact myself or Julia for, um, for any questions or if you would uh, like to um, collaborate. So thank you very much. I'll uh, start. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Don Hardison Stevens, and I'm a Mushke Cree Ojibwa Kalat, and I'm on Stella Comes Tribal Council. Um, I have family who are Squamish, Cowichan, Lummi, Quinault, um, um, from several areas along the Canada and um, United States. I'm a part of the University of Washington, Seattle College of Education. I'm a lecturer with the um, teacher education program and also um, lecturer and program manager for the Native Education Certificate Program and also a uh, lecturer in the Department of American Indian Studies. And I want to share too that uh, um, University of Washington, Seattle is on the historical lands of the Duwamish, um, a historical treaty signing tribe. Um, one of the signers is Chief Seattle with Duwamish and Suquamish peoples. Hi everybody, um, this is Kristen French and um, I am Blackfeet, uh, I'm Scott Bipakuni, uh, Grove on Eastern and Eastern Band Cherokee and I'm also a guest here on Lummi Nation Ancestral Land as well as Nooksack. Uh, I'm faculty, I'm actually professor in elementary ed and I'm the director of the Center for Education, Equity and Diversity. Um, Dr. Annalise is Odawa of the uh, Little, Little Travers Band, and we've been doing this work collaboratively here at Western. Um, we are both considered assistants to the Dean on Since Time Immemorial, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that means in terms of professional development. I believe Laurel Ballou is not on this particular call. She's our tribal liaison for Western Washington University and has been just absolutely fantastic and, and supportive of the work that we're doing. This is Sarah Shearer. I'm an assistant professor of social studies and multicultural education at UW Bothell. And I've been working closely with Kristen and Don and, and several other amazing educators across the state to coordinate Bothell's new uh, program for SDI and and to recognize how important it is at Bothell and across the state that we that we celebrate our our tribal communities and working closely in our space with Tulalip Nation. Regarding um, the work that we've been doing together with uh, um, Sarah and Chris and Anna and uh, um, myself, uh, we have a permanent one credit class. It's a hybrid. Um, participants use Canvas. The option can be online or you know face to face in a classroom. Um, some of the classes, like the U Act, uh, that's the Accelerated Certificated Teachers, um, they're scattered throughout Washington State. You know, from Tri Cities, Spokane, Yakima, 
We even have one that's in California, a uh, student. And so we're pretty excited to have Zoom opportunities, you know, with everyone. And also with uh, um, special ed and some of the other um, courses, you know, like STEP, the secondary teacher ed program and elementary teacher ed program, and then STRs, the Seattle teacher residencies. They attend course, you know, face-to-face. -face. And the course is a standalone, uh, Understanding Tribal Perspectives, Implications for Teaching and Learning. And the course, you, we, we work with, um, last summer, we experimented with the course. Uh, Kristen taught uh, the elementary LTEP folk as part of a social studies curriculum, but still as a one credit standalone class. And uh, the secondary teacher ed program, they uh, um, took the whole summer courses and used uh, Since Time Memorial as a theme across all content areas, um, as well as the one credit course. So we're pretty excited to have that happen. We, we started this course, we piloted it in summer of uh, um, 2017, and it's grown um, with some changes. And um, we we're pretty excited to bring in Kristen French and Annalise from Western Washington University to teach it during our pilot year and continue to collaborate on uh, its uh, effectiveness and bringing in native knowledges and native ways. I'll go next. This is Sarah. So UW Baffle is launching, is piloting its courses that I created and in celebration of collaboration with, with several several trusted friends and colleagues. Um, so the two courses are launching this spring. Um, UW Bothell has taken the path of five credits for its STI requirements over the course of two courses. So we're having a three credit online content class for our pre-service teachers in the elementary program. They will be the first phase. Um, we've now begun brainstorming multiple phases of rollout of sections for the courses so that all of our students, so uh, secondary who will start next year and then collaborating and brainstorming for our principalship um, and master's students to also have access to the courses. So the three credit content classes online for students to really have time and space to learn about sovereignty and all of the content of STI, and then followed up by a two credit hybrid methods course where they're having dedicated time to lesson plan and think about integrated teaching and land based pedagogies, and also working with Tulalip to develop some, some places for students to to have, have time and space to go outside of Canvas and do work as well. So I'm really excited for the pilot to launch this spring um, and to see what else comes of the dedication the Bakul has shown to really making STI a priority across our School of Educational Studies. Great, this is Kristen. And um, as I began to share a little bit more about Western, you know, the title of this is Institutional Collaboration. And so I really want to um, thank Don and Sarah for being just amazing when it comes to um, collaboratively um, doing this, you know, academically, but also personally. And so I think that has made such a huge difference on what we've been able to, to do at Western and also what um, UW's been able to do. Uh, so here at Western, so thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Don. And that's for me and Anna. Um, Western has a one credit course that's online and face to face and we've been going back and forth about what are the best ways to get this information to our students and for some it's been mostly online and others it's been um, you know mostly in person so I can talk more about that for folks who are interested in that. Um, yes Anna and I worked with Dawn and of course we we talked a little bit more about this in the last um, in the last webinar, but this work began for us in 2015 um, explicitly. It began a lot longer um, prior to that, but explicitly for STI in this one credit course in 2015. But we piloted um, with UW in 2017, and then we continued um, developing our one credit course and going through curriculum committees and working with our departments and um, chairs and dean. And so we actually launched 
um, our, we piloted for about a year and a half and we launched our first requirement for all teacher candidates in LED, ECE, and SPED um, this fall. And we're working currently with our secondary education department to make sure they're in compliance with the law. And in addition, we have um, with our education, culture, and equity course, the one foundational course for all of our teacher candidates across programs, um, that we added one credit. That, well, the credit was added to the um, early childhood elementary and special education courses. And we're looking for that same hopefully for our secondary ed um, department. But that one credit was to really help our students anchor their experience in the one credit class. And we wanted the multicultural ed class and the Since Time and Memorial course to be linked within the same quarter so we can build together on the knowledge. And for the foundations course, the focus is on the socio-political um, and historical um, foundations and context for understanding tribal sovereignty. And then also we understood that one credit isn't enough and then two credits isn't enough. And we also wanted our students not to be deeply wrestling with this, but we wanted them to have the, um, the action. So we, at the time, worked with our folks who were um, teaching social studies and both Anne and I were also piloting the social studies STI course together um, and adding um, their course methods content um, with teachers in their first, or teacher candidates in their first quarter of internship. So that's been really successful. And um, fortunately, having the opportunity personally to teach the social studies in the LTEP program at UW um, uh, Seattle and teaching tribal sovereignty, seeing that we can do something similar by pairing the one credit tribal sovereignty course with social studies just to enhance that experience. We've, um, at the university, um, Seattle. We've worked uh, um, with tribes. Um, we we're fortunate to have a board that uh, consists of tribal leaders and other um, faculty folks at the UW. And we also have two student representatives um, who are Native. So we've uh, um, worked with Muckleshoot um, thanks to our board, the Indigenous Education Advisory Board um, to the College of Education. And um, they've, uh, uh, Muckleshoot hosts um, annually the elementary teacher ed program as well as the Seattle Teachers Residency. And the Suquamish tribes uh, um, host the uh, STEP, the secondary teacher program. And we get tours of the compact schools, the Muckleshoot Tribal School and also Chief Kitsap Academy and um, their longhouse, uh, House of Awaken Culture. And a good day is spent with uh, both tribes. Um, students uh, attend, go to the um, reservations and also to the schools. And for some students, it's the first time they've ever walked on reservations, um, reservation land. And so we're pretty excited. We're looking to work with also the Seattle School District's Native Education Department, Hachusaida. Um, the consultation happens with all Washington Tribal Museums. Um, part of the uh, requirements with students is to visit a tribal museum just to um, understand some of the tribal history and also gather resources for their classrooms. And it's taught across content areas and we ask secondary teachers who teach math and science, you know, to know that learning comes from all areas. I mean, looking at a, dugout canoe and you've got, you know, your science and technology, engineering and mathematics, and also the arts, all part of that. And same with world languages. Um, you know, how, how can Since Time of Memorial benefit everybody and um, also a lot of the tribal resources available. Tribal museums are required field trips for the UACT and SPED, um, regardless of where their location is. Um, across the state of Washington, but incorporates um, lots of learning. We've uh, partnered with Patsy Whitefoot out at Yakima for uh, um, some of the teacher candidates who work in Eastern Washington, and also with Spokane Tribe, um, Jennifer Labrette, um, who works with uh, teacher candidates in that area as well. So at UW Bothell, right now we are having some amazing collaboration meetings and brainstorming and dreaming um, with, uh, with staff and, and members at Tulalip 
to really start to build the capacity for um, partnership that would also begin to include Marysville schools. Um, we're, we're really excited because one of the things we've been talking about is you know, the commitment we need to make in teacher education to preparing our, our future teachers to, to teach STI in really rich ways, but also when it comes to our, our, our mentor teachers in our program, and, and this was mentioned in an earlier, earlier conversation that some of our awful too, some of our mentor teachers haven't had the opportunity to even look at St. Simon Memorial yet. So, so thinking of the ways that we're preparing our pre-service teachers to do this work and also build the capacity to get to their mentors and principals to really start layering in, layering in STI as as a central component to our teaching. So those conversations are ongoing at Bothell. I just started to the niche. Uh, this is Kristen. Um, both Anna and I um, have um, relationships with folks out at Lummi for a very long time um, prior to the STI work. And so we've just built on those um, already uh, wonderful relationships with folks who are very committed to this work, including Bernie Thomas from Lummi Nation School, um, the director of Lummi Nation School. You know, we talked about this a little bit last time, so I'll um, I'll go quickly. We also wanted to just share that we need to, as a university, determine who our additional tribal partners are. And um, and now that we have uh, Laurel Ballou, our tribal liaison, who has been there now for a year, we are really consulting with her um, to do the proper protocol for formalizing institutional partnerships with the local tribal nations. So with the local um, nation engagement with the Since Time of Memorial curriculum, um, again, you know, I mentioned, you know, our, our, a lot of the teacher candidates um, teach and live in various locations uh, within Washington State and or will be teaching in various um, locations. So we have them choose uh, one of three local tribes. We use one of the Since Time of Memorial maps. Um, as students uh, um, research and explore the site and gather resources. And they choose one of the um, tribes as their focal areas, um, their choice, you know, where they would like to be teaching or are teaching, and then gathering the resources um, with the tribe and, and um, gathering um, partnerships with the people um, where community engagement plans are created. You know, also, including site visits and tribal feedback with a community showcase event of the candidates' work, which is part of their assessment, part of their end result. You know, we have them create, uh, take a since time of memorial um, lesson and create it um, as their own and build upon it based on, you know, tribal-specific uh, information and other um, tribal specific uh, resources and then the showcase uh, everyone gets together and they can view the work of everyone on trifold posters and it's a wonderful event that includes keynote speakers uh, we've had Senator uh, McCoy uh, um, we've had panelists of Native educators um, who share their expertise and uh, get everyone working together and, and knowing who local tribal people are and some of their best resources. We're, we're doing a lot here at Bothell, um, or working to do um, as many consultations and collaborations as we can, um, particularly as, as I've been drafting the course syllabi for the, the two courses that are launching this spring. Um, having as many eyes on it as I can to ensure that that our, our pre-service teachers are, are really being able to engage in place-based, local you know, pedagogy and histories and current events and really being able to understand you know, where we live, you know, the impacts of colonialism, et cetera. Um, and so I'm grateful too, because I have much more time credit-wise, you know, uh, the students are gonna be able to be, you know, they're gonna be working with a lot of documentary film, um, a lot of readings, and the, and the methods class itself, um, they're going to do a unit plan and inspired by Seattle's event that I was 
so thankful to be able to attend this past summer while I was still while I was still waiting for my furniture to be delivered um, to have that showcase. And so we're going to be drawing inspiration from from our colleagues um, to also host an event um, where the students are showcasing the unit plans that they'll be creating in that standalone two credit class. This is Kristen. Here at Western, um, I just want to say ditto to everything Don said. Um, we, since we collaboratively created the one credit course together, our, our content is very similar. And we also have our current curriculum includes similar to UW with the Muckleshoot um, visit. Ours includes a site visit with Lummi Nation. And so that looks differently depending on the course. So I know that Dr. Lease had done a land-based um, visit of Cherry Point um, with local Lummi Nation elders and community members. And um, as we're preparing right now, this will be our third visit in the LED uh, STI course to Lummi Nation School for a visit hosted by the school. Um, where we do a tour and we get a chance to talk about the uh, curriculum content, the um, language and culture specific curricular content and the history. And then we're preparing for our um, March 11th visit where we're going to Lummi Nation School and um, presenting our uh, community engagement um, poster presentations, um, as Don described, within the school with Lummi youth, which is really exciting to have, you know, fifth through 12th graders engage with college students and reminding our college students that this content is not outside of yourself. This is community work and to highlight from a strength-based perspective the ways that our local tribal nations are addressing issues like climate change or murder and missing indigenous women or whatever the issues that they identify are. Um, and identify that from how the tribal communities are addressing these. So it's, it's really powerful. Um, and the feedback from students has been that it is, um, it is transformative for them. So that's very exciting. Um, so um, I, I think that we're still so open to the ways that we can continue to make this better. So, you know, again, excited to hear what other folks are doing so that, you know, we can all uh, connect together to do the best for our, our local tribal nations. With the institutional professional development, um, during the 2017-18 academic year, um, professional development was provided um, by Dr. Megan Bang and I. Uh, to the College of Education, teacher ed program administrators, um, program directors, uh, faculty and staff. And we're looking more um, into uh, continuing professional development uh, at the requests of a lot of folks um, in the College of Education. So for us, that's pretty exciting. Uh, we also offer the Native Education Certificate Program which is a two-year professional development um, as continuing education options for all educators and administrators who earn 10 graduate level credits. And we're launching our third cohort in August. And the uh, response has been absolutely incredible, even in the College of Education itself and the high interest, um, but also across uh, with teachers and administrators across the state especially those who work in uh, tribal communities and or their profession um, engages with tribal com communities. And so we use a lot of the Sense Time of Memorial curriculum and materials and um, have folks explore, you know, and it just kind of amazes me sometimes, you know, even one of the deans, you know, was totally unaware of, you know, how many uh, tribes are in Washington state but you know the locations of the tribes, you know, is were kind of like prisons, and you know tribal members were not allowed to leave, and even a superintendent of a school district just amazed at the tribes who surround his school district, and you know it, it's work that needs to expand and continue and grow, um, not with just teacher candidates, but with teachers and administrators themselves. So we're pretty excited to, you know, have what we have and grow 
um, in ways that all people in education uh, have an understanding of tribal perspectives. Uh, this is Kristen from Western, and um, I think that, you know, just to begin with, we have been working since the passage of SB 5433 to help our colleagues in our, you know, or our college, specifically the College of Education, um, and so I want to also just thank uh, Dr. Laura Lynn because Dr. Laura Lynn came out and facilitated a faculty uh, STI training. Um, and at that time, we invited Lummi Nation school teachers so that, again, continuing our collaboration with our professional development with our, our partners. And um, since the funding that we received through the last legislation of 5028, both Anna and I um, were given the title of uh, assistant to the Dean for STI. And um, we were, we developed a professional development for our, our colleagues who are all teaching the multicultural ed course so that we could help them to develop that one credit addition to the course. And additionally, our Native American Student Union, who Anna and I are both the faculty advisors for, um, wrote a letter several years ago with urgent needs of the university. And one of the, the top urgent need was um, government-to-government training uh, through the governor's office uh, for all administrators. And this was modeled after what folks at UW have done in the past. So we're still, we, we, we've had two government-to-government trainings at the university level, and we are currently collaborating with our, our dean and our associate deans on, and our department chairs on getting all of our department chairs, administrators, and folks who would be interested in teaching um, STI or just knowing more to have that um, government to government training. And of course, um, we continue to work with Lummi Nation and particularly for um, land-based um, education and professional development. Uh, that's our ultimate goal. In fact, in our one credit course and in the multicultural ed course, we uh, focus on you know, land, water, place, and space. Uh, as an, and with tribal sovereignty. So I appreciate what other folks have been saying about that. But we, we also know that one of the challenges for us is that similar to courses of multicultural ed um, in the past and, and in the present, you know, sometimes folks feel that they have enough knowledge if they've t done some professional development to teach a course like this. And we're really um, encouraging our institution to hire more tenure track Native faculty with this as their, their expertise. And I'm going to add to that the entire College of Education during their annual professional development institute hosted um, Denny Hurtado with us in Stemma Memorial and Skokomish Nation, but kind of the father of the Sensema Memorial, and also Gordon and Pam James, um, who did a government to government and historical. Um, presentation on the tribal sovereignty of nations um, within the state and very well received and it was very, uh, um, many of the um, staff and faculty of the College of Education thought it was the best institute they've ever um, attended and uh, applauded our guests. Some of the adaptations uh, with the Since Time of Memorial um, with this assignment, you know, I mentioned earlier, candidates choose uh, one um, to create um, and expand on and, you know, to help create one of their own lessons. And I call them, you know, gifts to themselves. And, you know, the importance of including, you know, the sovereignty um, curriculum within the um, teaching and learning process, you know, not just, you know, as a lesson or unit, but as an everyday occurrence. And so uh, depending on the course, you know, whether they're lessons or um, lesson sketches or uh, building entire units, it's something that the teacher candidates can take with them. The, um, the Leadership for Learning, l for l it prepares principals and superintendents. Um, and it's taught with Dr. Anthony Craig um, at Yakima, who was a, a hire at the College of Education a few years ago. And um, Kristen was mentioning as well that the, um, the hiring of tenured track Native faculty and the College of Education is doing the same thing you know, with uh, the, hire, the recent hire of Dr. Emma Elliott Groves and then with Anthony Craig and, uh, um, and the 
search continues. Thank you so much again. And so I think there are a couple of questions for programs here. Um, I have a question for UW Seattle specifically, uh, and they would like to know, is the Native Education Certificate Program being included as part of a teacher prep program, or is it designed as a continuing education certificate? Uh, either way, it's both. Uh, we have a range of participants um, taking advantage of it. We do have some teacher candidates who are interested in, in the program, um, and you know, teachers can use it either way. It is continuing education or part of the program, their choice. We would like to thank all of our presenters who presented some fabulous information. Um, again, we'd encourage you to register for the Office of Native Education STI trainings. And Joan Banker's email is on here. You can email her and she will send that out to you. Our um, contact information is on the screen and I know Laura and I both would be very open and would love to hear any uh, other questions, suggestions, anything else you may have to um, send to us as we, we continue to work with you.